year-old version of myself contacted me and said to me, show me a film that represents the worst of cinema in your era today. Um, what would you give me? Uh, and that brings me to Bullet Train. Yeah, so let's talk about this film, if I went with a better term for it. Okay, welcome back to the channel, everyone. Um, AJ's Movie Place here. Um, yeah, new movie review for you. And I'm going to talk about the new 2022 Brad Pitt starring movie, Bullet Train, that I've just watched. Um, yes. So anyway, this film has a runtime of two hours and six minutes. Um, and is directed by, by David Leitch, who is the director of previous films like Deadpool 2, Atomic Blonde, Hobbs and Shaw. Um, but this feels... It, it's like there's a, he's taken a step each time into ludicrousness more and more and more. Um, that's how it feels. Um, now, the film stars Brad Pitt, Joey King, Aaron Taylor-Johnson, who you know as Kick-Ass, among other things, ZZ Beats, who was in Deadpool um, 2, um, Michael Shannon, um, Zod, um, Bubble Empire, as well as a wealth of other acting talent you will recognise, and a couple of cameos that I'm going to spoil for you now, um, Channing Tatum and Sandra Bullock turn up. Um, yes, but this film follows Brad Pitt's hitman, um, his name is Ladybug, that's his like call sign. Um, and basically, it all takes place on this train, a bullet train, a Japanese bullet train, these fast, fast trains that they have over there. There's all these different assassins on board, and you know, there's a suitcase that they've got to get a hold of. They're all trying to kill each other. Um, there's a little bit of a plot about why they're all on the train, why they all happen to be there at the same time, and this sort of a thing. Um, and Really, the, the plot for this film is, is non-existent. It doesn't matter. It doesn't exist. It's just one action scene after another action scene in a CGI heavy mess of a movie. Now, like I said, I'd give this to my younger self and I'd say, Ego, take a look at this, because this is a great representation of everything wrong with cinema today. This is a bad film. It's not a good film. I mean, I can understand why people might like it. You know, it's it's pretty much made for for uh, the lowest demographic of people that exist. Yeah, it's it's mind numbing. Two hours and six minutes. I got to about ninety minutes, and I was hoping that there might only be ten minutes of the film left. To my dismay, there was thirty six minutes left, and, and I, I was like, oh my god, you know. Somebody put me out of my misery with this. Um, it's got a fantastic cast, right? It's got a fantastic cast of very good actors. But actors that can do so much better with their talent. Um, the film's got an element of humour to it. Obviously it has. It's not, you know, you've seen the trailers. Ironically, one of the trailers runs for two minutes and six seconds. And this film is two hours and six minutes long. I did notice that. And even that trailer dragged. Um... But this film does drag because it doesn't give you story. And this is the problem with most cinema films today, most big budget films. Um, and the problem isn't the film. The problem is the audience. The audience for this stuff, those that, that relish and take this stuff in, that's the younger generation. This is a generation of, of, of people that live on TikTok, that consume their content 15 seconds at a time. So thusly a film cannot give you story. It cannot give you character development because the producers and the, 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 the studios behind it fear that a little bit of character development or a little bit of story will start to bore the audience. So let's eject that and put in an action scene, a fight scene to keep people's minds going. Now, I don't mind dumb, ludicrous films. I don't. But sometimes I will put one on. Now, they'll, they'll grip me. Some will grip me. Some won't. This one didn't. What I find myself doing is I'm watching this and my mind starts going to films, films of the past, like The Green Mile, The Shawshank Redemption, things like that, because I want something with 
a bit more texture to it, a bit more, bit more meat on those bones, and this film just certainly doesn't give you that. I mean, like I said, it is CGI heavy. It, it looks CGI. Everything looks CGI in it. Um, the backdrops, the you know, outside the train, um, at the end when stuff occurs with the train, it's so CGI heavy that it, it just feels like you can like slice through it. it it's it's just unrealistic CGI. They don't even want to try and make it look real. It looks almost like a cartoon. Um, yes. Now, as for performances in it, Brad Pitt is very likeable in, in the film. He's very good. He does the best with what he's got. And, and he, he does, you know, he does command the screen, Brad Pitt. But again, an actor that should be in stuff better. Um, the one actor that stood out the most for me in this film was Aaron Taylor Johnson. Um, with his sort of Cockney British accent and all this sort of a thing that he had. Um, I thought that was great. It took me a little bit of getting used to it. I mean, I know he's English anyway. But but then I got into his character a lot more. And it was, it was like something out of a, a Guy Ritchie film. Um, his, his performance in this. Um, yeah, it, you know... Some of the characters were fine, they were interesting, you know, it, it was nice to see Channing Tatum pop up, I like Channing Tatum, and Sandra Bullock popping up at the end, but her voice is throughout the film, but the one thing with Sandra Bullock when she pops up, Christ almighty, how much of a facelift has this woman now had, when she's talking, there's no movement in her face, you know, this whole bit here, there's no movement, um, the mouth moves and she gets a bit of movement here, Everything else just looks so hard and stiff on her. Um, just looks so unnatural, Jesus. Um, that's just a little personal thing more than anything. I'm not, you know, she's a great actress, don't get me wrong. But why? She's such an attractive woman. And, and yet, you know, you go and just, you have all this surgery done. Why? That's me just coming out of it a little bit. It just took me out of the film when I saw that. And it was actually my missus that said to me, look, her face ain't even moving. I thought, bloody hell, you're right. There's no movement. It's just unnatural. Um, but yeah, for me, this film was, wow, it's just... Uh, it's a bad film. It's a poor film. It, it's just, like I said, it, it just... It, it's, it's a great representation of, of what we have. And the problem is, is as you get younger, you know... It's a knock-on effect, isn't it, right? Um, the audience of today watch this stuff. The future filmmakers of today, the future, they watch this stuff and they crave this stuff and then they go into making films and then gradually the whole, the whole it all gets worse. Yeah, because they, they, they see this and then, you know, it just, it just worries me where cinema's going because it's a step downwards, it's a spiral step down. Um, you know... Where's it going? Where, where's it going to end, this stupidness? Because if, you know, obviously I'm, I'm older. I've seen films where character and, and story were forefront before anything else. You always had your, your action and all that. But, you know, even some of them, you know, look at Die Hard and, and how long it takes to get into the action in that film because of the build-up and the character and the, the setup and all this sort of stuff within the film. Now it's like throw it in being at the first second. Action, action, action. And it's thrown down your face and it doesn't let up until the end. And that makes for a very boring time, for me anyway. Um, I just, oh, it's just an abysmal, abysmal piece of cinema. What else can I say? This is AJ. Thanks for watching. See you later. Take care all. Goodbye.